now. Officially started. And what I'm going to ask is um, just a quick thing. Um, is whilst I annotate, um, I'm going to ask of Gillian, and this is this is a map from. You can't get much better than this anyway. This is a map from about 1830 uh, odd. Uh, that's Abathor there. And we're going to look at a building which is over here, which is known as um, the Lime Works. And then we're going to look at the Blue Anchor. Um, and then we're going to look at um, a few other things from the landscape. So we, as, we, as we crack on, I would like to know, Gillian, in a word, what do you know about Abathor? It's East and West Abathor, and they've got some pretty little old cottages. Yeah, I'm glad you said East and West Abathor. Actually, that's all you're going to say because that's quite a big contribution, actually. Um, and that that'll be a, that'll be a good start, actually. Um, Amy, what do you know about Abathor? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> well, you know, ab absolutely nothing's fine. At least you're honest. Yeah. Um, now. I'm not really sure I'm going to do an Abathor 2, so I'm going to try and put as much as I can in Abathor 1. Um, but what I would say is that Abathor itself um, has had quite a rather interesting history. So my little notes in front of me. Um, if, you want to, if you want to sort of go past the um, cement works and the power station. Before that, there's a nice little story here um two little stories about the second world war so I go, i'll keep them for a moment um and then we've got lots of stories then about smuggling um and then we've got the story in connection with the blue anchor that we'll we'll have a look at so we'll see if we can do the smuggling as well um but something that i'll probably will mention um, as we sort of start um before we mention the roman stuff because we've got a bit of roman stuff here today so let's mention that um, in by about the 1820s, um, Abathor was still quite a nice um, area in the sense that it's got got a powerful trade with over the water, and it's trading over the water um, a a staple product known as limestone, and the limestone itself is readily collected. Um, not only from the beach, but there's a number of quarries along the coast anyway. So the limestone itself is exported to places like Devon and Cornwall, but doesn't have um, large resources of um, that resource, limestone, because limestone, as we know, can be used um, to make um, acidic fields um, neutral by spreading the lime on it, which um, sort of that, that that's good for the crops limestone can be used when there's outbreaks of diseases to spread on bodies in the ground to get rid of uh, bacteria and so on lime can actually be used um, as a disinfectant it can also be used in the building industry um, it can also be used in the pharmaceutical industry um, and because Gillian's absolutely beautiful she wouldn't need to use lime makeup um, so lime itself was a very, I would say, um, lime um, as a trading commodity um, was in the top three of the most powerful trading commodities of the South Wales area. And that, that's, that's a big ask, but you know, um, before coal, before iron, lime was a big industry. And you can tell from the local landscape. But by the 1840s, after this map, Abathor declined. Now, Gillian, you're right in what you said. East Abathor, you follow the arrow down there, that's where the um, blue anchor is. And then you've got um, West you, Abathor. Carl. You can't Carl, hear me. You... No. I'm, bre I'm breaking up. Yeah. Since when have you been breaking up? A couple of minutes. Well, okay, then I'll, I'll just, I will just deal with the technical thing now. Hang on.
Can you hear me now, folks? Yes. Right, I don't know what the problem was there. Right, so I, as I was saying, after the 1820s, Abathor declined, and it was, um, and after the 1840s, we're, we're sort of starting to look at um, the population, which was much greater than the figure I'm going to give you. Um, East Abathor and West Abathor declined to a population of 495 people in 1851 census which is in fact it, it was actually a decline in population for Abathor but uh, if you compare the population of Abathor with places like Barry and Caddickston um, Abathor's population was was probably double the size of the complete combined area so it's quite a sizable population even in 1851 and in lots of ways um, I'm not really sure what the Abathor population is today and I, I don't think it's too far off that figure I might be talking on jest but uh, it's not it's not much greater than that since 1851 but the, the population before that was much greater um, due to the limestone and then think industrialization came along so um, what we what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to pop on to the next image so let's clear all that um, and let's go on to here we go nicely um, sort of a nicer sort of a little bit of a more modern map. So there you go, Gillian was right. You've got West Abathor and you've got the wonderful East Abathor. Um, we won't mention anything about Charleston today, really. There, there, there's sort of a little bit of mention about Charleston in passing in connection with um, the story that I'll be reading out today, The Little Man Down the Lays. Um, there's a you know little bit of a mention there, but Charleston has got its own history, so we'll be looking at that again. Um, and what I what I wanted to introduce, and I, and I mentioned it before, we had that little bit of disruption. I mentioned the Roman link. Now that's rather interesting because um, if any of you get have had a got copy of my book, The Romans of the Vale of Morgan, they will they will hear talk of the Nurston Industrial Building. The, the Nurston um, Roman building and, and the Nurston Roman building you've got Nurston Mark there is sort of around this area however um, with all that being said the one thing that I will mention um, is down by about here if any of you actually go to Abathor today so what you've got you've got um, to sort of give you a bit of a marker, you've got the um, blue anchor here. Um, and then, which isn't shown on the map, is actually, um, let's change the colour. There's, there's a little lane going down here. And that's a rather interesting lane. And why that lane is rather interesting, this is known as Well Road, um, of account that there's a, there's a well associated with it. But this is rather interesting because Back in the 19, 1950s, um, they actually came across the remains of possibly two Roman buildings in that vicinity, um, and lots of Roman coins, um, and something that would be a pride of place on any Roman table, Roman Samian ware, which would be imported in from the likes of uh, Gaul, which is modern day France. And that same in word dates the Roman buildings here to around the period of around 100 AD. So it's very likely from around 100 AD, here we go, all the way probably way into around the 470s, there was probably Roman buildings uh, within this vicinity. And it's um, <laughs> rather interesting me saying that because those Roman buildings would have taken advantage of a very different landscape because we behind me on my image it actually shows the landscape before they actually decided to um, cut off cut off the landscape from the sea um, and it's quite likely that this whole area created a very large harbour, a very large inlet. But today, unfortunately, the landscape is blocked off by a large quay that runs across here, which is unfortunate. 
But this, I, I've even mentioned in my own book, was possibly the site of a very important Roman harbour. And it's likely that the Roman harbour itself may have actually been located somewhere around here, um, which would be very close to where those Roman buildings were, probably in this vicinity. So, so I'll give you a bit of Roman background. So that's, that's kept um, John happy today. Mm. And some of the coins that we found are from about the 370s. So that's another um, interesting area of where we're looking at today. As I say, if we don't get through everything today, there's no rush, we can easily do it again. Um, so this is a nice little bit of an aerial view. Now, one thing that I will be mentioning, if I do get around to it, um, is, hang on, I put the aloe in the wrong place. Let's just get rid of that one. Good. I will be mentioning a rather interesting locality. Hang on. Oh God, it's all going wrong a minute. Hang on a minute. Let's just sort of try and get myself. There you go. Here was in fact a wonderful train station, which we've actually got an image of, which we'll actually show you. Um, but that'll be probably towards the end. Um, so what I'd like to do now is I'd actually pro probably like to plonk us over to um, the Blue Anchor. Um, and the Blue Anchor, for anyone knows, is over by here. Um, and uh, obviously, Gillian, I needn't ask you, have you been to the Blue Anchor? I have, yes. I have as well. But obviously, can I ask you a silly question, Gillian? It's probably... Um, your husband comes from the area, but um, you don't. So when did you? No, he does. The... My husband's but... from Yorkshire. I thought your husband was from the area. No, no, oh. neither of us are. Oh, right. <coughs> okay. So no, but he worked. He worked in Cardiff, though, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. So no, that's. I don't really want to know that side of where you originated. But when did you come down into the area? Into Lantwit, uh, three uh, no, years. In, but how long were you living in Cardiff? All my life. Oh right. So, um, but you, but can you ever remember the really old thatch on um, on the uh, blue blue anchor before it was set alight? Yes, yes, I can. We used to come out in the sixties. Oh wow! So, but but that's that's a bit. It, you used to come out in the 1960s, but that's but not in the 1960s uh, before the power station was built. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. So you when you could go out power. in your car to have a drink, you know, there was no drink driving then. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Fair, fair enough. So, um, so what I'd like what I'd like to do now is if what we're going to do, we're going to look at the blue anchor. That's where we're going to go um rub all these out and we're going to go a little bit further in and get the mouse and blue anchor oh and by, by the way sorry we got there too soon uh to get your eyes used to it the, the story that i'm building up is is actually the story um um of the little man down the lays so we will do that and 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 the little man down the lays and the part the story is associated with this um, sea embankment here. Um, and while he's talking about these ponds, he's talking about these. So get that sort of into your mindset. And he's a, he, he, the man who we're talking about with the little man down the lays, Desmond Johnson, he was very much a fisherman. So I think John would be able to connect to that. So, um, so what we need to do now, I'm gonna go directly on to, there we go, the blue anchor. So the Blue Anchor's roof has been set alight a few times, and in the last two decades, uh, it was set alight again. Um, and what we what we know um, about the Blue Anchor, and actually, actually, but from my facts and figures, it tells me that the Blue Anchor was set alight. The roof went up in 1922, nine, uh, and 2001, and also 2004. I don't think it went, was set alight um, twice in um, the past two, de two decades, but there you go. Um, so that's the fireman um, sort of responding to the fire on the roof. And obviously the terrible thing is, is that the headlines were um, the blue anchor 
the reputed site of the original castle of um, Aberthaw, um, where, where there was an accidental fire or not, I'm not sure, but um, some of the timbers that did survive, um, we actually do see that they actually date from the 1380s. Um, and that's rather interesting because it sort of settles the idea that there's been a building there from at least the 1300s. Um, and it's, it's going to be all associated with, and whoever's got their phone bling in, make sure you uh, put it out. Um, um, so this is rather interesting. This sets it into more of a memorial landscape, um, a deep memorial landscape. And obviously there's those usual stories um, of a tunnel from here leading to the coast. Um, and there's also talk nearby as well in the 1500s, whilst they were bringing um, various goods um, from the harbour um, to the Blue Anchor, there was, a, there was apparently back in the day, rather interesting fact here, a tobacco drying shed um, in the late 1500s. So one of the first lo localities to be drying tobacco in Britain was actually um, a building associated with a blue anchor. So you know you, you've got you've got something rather interesting there. All these little you can't miss out Aberthaw um, when you think about the local landscape because it's it's rather it's rather interesting. Um, and when you go in there, it's got a nice little fireplace and all these nook and crannies and and all the rest of it. Um, and strangely enough, a, a strange fact that I actually read today. Strangely enough. I couldn't believe my eyes. Um, the the area of East Abathor um, is actually a scheduled ancient monument, so everything there is protected um, by law. So you can't do anything to it. You know, if you do, um, terrible things might not happen to you. I'm sounding a bit cynical there, um, but the the whole core of it's a scheduled ancient monument. It's it's, it's classed as a, a, um, a good example of a medieval nucleated village. Um, and the sort of the sense of the crossroads associated with Abathor here, um, you can get to the heart of it there, the, you know, the pure crossroads, that's sort of a, a typical type of medieval village plan. And, and that's rather interesting that we talk about that. Um, and just sort of talking again, um, what, what we do find is that if you, if you look over, um, if you look over here, you've got that modern quarry and you've got this quarry here. And back in the day, it's likely that the sort of cliff line quarries um, and lots of pebbles were being collected off the coast. So it's a very rich, rich landscape. You know, again, reiterating that the that the limestone is, is rather, rather important um, to to the great survival of East Abathor, basically until about the 1840s um, and 1850s. It's probably because, you know, um, people have moved on from limestone in Devon and Cornwall. Um, because, you know, more superior um, methods for, more superior lime is actually coming in to Devon and Cornwall um, you know, after the 1840s. So that, that's sort of thinking a little bit more about the limestone. But I'd like, like to mention, however, that when when we think about when we think about the limestone um when we think about the limestone it's hydraulic lime very important thing hydraulic lime it's it sets underwater and the, and this type of lime from this coastline may have actually been some of the lime that was actually used for the Eddystone lighthouse interesting yeah that's a little bit of a fact for your um your quizzes um, and was used for canal um, locks as well, because when they're building um, canal locks, those canal locks you need to be made out of superior lime, high quality lime. And it's known as, um, the certain type of limestone here was known as Taras limestone, T-A-R-R-A-S, Taras limestone. Um, one second, somebody's left me a message. Why, why, is, why has John sent me a message saying, will Peter have his crimson boxes on tonight? Don't ask. Um, so the Taras limestone um, is the specific stuff that comes from here. Um, and <laughs> John hasn't changed. 
Um, so that's thrown me a little bit. So I, I want to talk a little bit more about um, the blue anchor, actually. Um, talking too much about the limestones. A nice old image of blue anchor. Um, probably after the 1920s when it was set alight, 1922. When I say set alight, it's, I'm not really sure that it was deliberately set alight. Um, and this, when, when you think about the Blue Anchor, and, and uh, Gillian will know that door, because I know that door, Gillian. You go into that door, don't you, if you want to sort of go into the formal entrance and sort of, because um, the other side's the restaurant, isn't it? And you go in this one into the pub. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I know it. And it's sort of old worldy, isn't it? And it looks a bit oh, like a I castle. Mm. It does, doesn't it? You know, sort of castle, castle Yeah, I, I think you can't really call it a castle. You can, should really more call it a, um, um, I don't know, a defended bond manor type house for a, for a manor that's near the sea. Because obviously there's going to be lots of really, um, there's going to be lots of goods coming in to the harbour there. And it's pro probably a harbour. They, they talk about smuggling, actually. Um, they talk about smuggling, lots of smuggling. Um, but there was customs duty paid on lots of the goods coming into Aberthaw. It was sort of an official thing. But that was on the, in East Aberthaw, on West Aberthaw. You've got something known as Marsh House, uh, which is no longer with us. Um, and that's, that's part of where the smuggling used to occur. And we'll, we'll, we'll come on to that. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to look at this building. Now, um, I don't know. I don't know if you. I don't know if you follow all our um, all our stuff on Facebook, um, Gillian. But we've got um, one person said recently he, he would love to go to see this um, building. Um, and this this is this is a, a a very a very interesting building at all. This is the um, Abathor Lime Works. Now, when oh. you go and see, you be, you've seen this, haven't you? Let, let's go on another, let, this is from the lower side. It's not really a good image, that. Um, you're not going to, if you go from the coast and you look inwards, is that ringing a bell? No? You recognising no. this? No? Because um, on, the, on the road there, on the top, so... Um, and do you know what? You, you've got me to digress there, uh, Gillian. I, I, I've got a ghost story coming, um, but I will resist it for a moment. Um, when you drive, when you drive from Font Gary uh, after getting your chips, you used to get the, my chips from Font Gary, right? Did you ever get your chips from Font Gary? No. I well, used to get chips from Font Gary and used to get a, a Coca Cola from the Blue Blue Anchor. Then just further on, ever thought, and used to see this building down on the left. But if you never went to Font Gary, you'd never see it. Now, very interesting building. Very interesting. That's what it used to look like, probably about um, 1905 or something like this. Um, and to give you an idea where this building is, there it is. So um, what we have is there that is um, from sort of this side. You're looking at it from that side. Uh, and, and again, uh, this sort of um, breakwater, this, um, uh, this, 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 yeah, we'll call it breakwater because that's how it's referred to. Um, and then you've got the line work works here, rather, rather important um, to the whole landscape and industry. And this, this was built not in 1800, this was built in January uh, 1888. And from above, you can see some rather interesting things. There you go. You can look down the. In, you can actually get inside these. Right. The, these are these are actually the furnaces for the for the lime, um, and and when when you look at the the ruins there, it's um, they were exporting out via ship um, from the harbour because the harbour itself was was open water back then. Um, you know, the, the breakwater is obviously built from the late, 19, late 1940s onwards. Um, and then, massively, um, is what we then see, um, which will in, interest um, some of us, the train line. Do, do, do. However, there was two train lines because um, another train line came in, um, and if, if I'm... I sometimes do get things wrong, so I'm just going to do my best on this. Another train line came in, sort of up here, 
um, and it keeps going and it went all the way along and, and basically there was another train line um, and that train line linked I think something it, I, maybe a bit of an angle actually because I think that that, that was the um, where the um, that's the siding with the first line where the cross is and this was linked to the train line in 1897 um, and that linked into not the Aberthaw to Cowbridge train line, which we've actually got an article in the next newsletter, actually, for those interested. So that's the Aberthaw Cowbridge train line, and um, not the Vale of Glamorgan train line, which um, I know Gillian, Gillian's used. Um, and I know full well that John's left a little message for me. Um, he, he's talking about Martin will know. Shut up, John. Um, so we're, we're, looking, we're looking at this and the the interesting thing is one of the key reasons why the Aberthaw Cowbridge train line um, shut um, in parts of it started to shut in the um, 1830s and obviously by by the 1850 uh, uh, 1930s um, 1950s was simply because um, the the line works here closed they, the the line works here closed in about 1920. So the building was only used for about 32 years and it's in a really good state of preservation. Um, because what happened then is the other cement works were constructed and they had those big quarries that we've seen, you know, and the other cement works, which are still there today, um, those other cement works, they took all the trade away from these line works. Um, and then the line works closed and then slowly but surely the Aberthaw train line shut down. And a little bit of an interesting fact, um, on the Aberthaw train line in, in a year, the reason why they had to close it to, um, um, they had to close it to normal passengers was because in a year they, they recorded only 150 ticket sales for the whole year. And they had, they had station masters and stations and it was running at a massive loss. So that, that's why they closed the train line about the, about the 1850s, 1851. It was all ripped up. It's all being ripped up. There it was. Um, a nice little fact there. So what I need to do, i show you a couple more images and I need to get a ghost story out. Um, so John will be happy that I haven't done too many ghost stories. He don't like his ghost stories, our John. But look at, look at this, a rather impressive building actually. Or, and I, if you compare the two images, actually, it's, it's not images wise, if you compare the two images, oh, hang on, gone the wrong way. Actually, that's, that's it today. So if you, if you go back, squint your eye and think, what, what's the changes? So the changes are, is obviously um, all the, um, now the metal work's gone, that's all been taken away for scrap. However, the, chim the chimney's still there. And actually, what you can see is the sidings line at the back. So that, that you know, that, that's where the line is. Um, um, and you can actually see here, um, this is all the marshy area, but this is actually, this is all still tidal. And there's three little lads there. They, one of them is John, um, and the other one's Del, wandering across. So I like it when we look at little cha cha changes. And that there, um, I do believe that is actually part of the train station buildings associated with the Vale of Morgan line. But again, that's another, that's another lecture altogether. So let, let's sort of um, go on a little bit further. Let's, let's, let's see where we are now. Um, and what we need to do is, it's a lovely building. You ever get a chance to go down there. Um, and and look at that. And John's mentioned where is the where is the privately owned castle nearby? That's at Fon Mon. And strangely enough, John, that's a nice little link because Fon Mon Estates um, owns the, um, the the cement works today. Um, and I do believe that every bag of cement that they actually produce, they used to get a penny a bag. Um, I think it's probably more like um, ten pence, twenty pence a bag, but they produce tens, hundreds of millions of bags of cement every year. So Fon Mon Estates makes a lot of money. Amazing library there, Carl. What's that? The, oh yeah, I think in yeah, the Fon Mon. It it's yeah, they yeah, it is. in and the, the books are they're amazing and they let you see them. You can't touch them. 
but it's amazing in there and I didn't know until I went in how good it is it is an amazing library yeah oh. I, I, I used to be I used to be friendly with a broad uh, Lord Brookbury uh, Brookby or whatever his name is uh, what were you gonna say Amy go for it oh Amy Amy did say something and she disappeared um so what what we what we're gonna do oh, oh and John said um that's that's the one Margaret and I went. Um, but there's a font. Um, I went there, but font whatever was closed. John, what are you on about? Makes sense when you're talking. God, um, I can't really hear you, Amy. Um, so anyway, moving on. Another ghostly image of that house. Um, and I want to I want to look inside as well. And that is actually looking out um, over the over the wonderful landscape. And do you know what what we're going to do? Uh, Michelle's having a little bit of a peep. That's you've got to pay you've got to pay six quid for this, Michelle. Mm -hmm. Say, so, oh, can I have another drink? Oh, I, you you charge six pounds for cups of coffee and tea. You see what she did? Yeah. I'll have a tea, please. Um, do you know what, guys? Um, you know what I've got inside me now, um, Gillian. I've got two stories from the Second World War. Do you want me to tell them? Yes, please. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, <coughs> do you know what? I'm going. I'm going to do the non-ghostly one first. Now, um, back in 1946, um, a, a certain um, Desmond Johnson, who who is associated with the little man down the lay store in my own book, he said that he was wandering around looking for ducks. Um, and lo and behold, he saw something sticking out the mud. And he thought, that's really strange. And he looked a bit closer. It looked like a fin of a bomb, a proper bomb. And this was 1946. And he thought, right, OK, um, I'm not going to touch it. So he flagged down the local policeman. And he said to the local policeman, look, I think I found a bomb in the mud. And the local policeman says, ah, oh, get out, get away with you, lad. And he says, look, I think I found a bomb in the mud. So anyway, he takes a police, police officer down to um, the mud and, the, and he says, look over there. And the, and the police officer says, oh, lo and behold, it looks like a bomb. So he, he yanked the bomb out the mud now, cringing at this point. He, he yanks the bomb out the mud with the proper profile, four fins at the back of this bomb. It turned out to be a 50 pound bomb. So he yanked it out. And he said, look, and the lads and, and um, Desmond's going, my God. And the police officer says, ah, nothing will happen to you. And, and, they, and he said, give me a hand with this bomb. At that, at that point, I would have done a runner. I think you would have done a runner as well, Gillian. Um, and he said, oh, give me a hand. And he put it in the boot of his car, right? 1950, 1946 is 46. So he put it in the boot of his car. And the police officer said, thank you very much. And he drove off with it. Can you believe it? A proper bomb from 1946 found in the mud. This mud yeah. down here. Amazing that, isn't it? So um, another, another, another thing as well is, is that um, another, this, this isn't so much of a ghostly story. Um, and I can't remember who told me this. I think it's also Desmond Johnson as well. Um, I need to go back to my original story, but I think he was telling this from somebody else. Apparently, a friend of his was sitting on the mud down here, right? Probably fishing or poaching or something like that. And he said, um, he said above his head, there was a, um, this was in 1940 now. Above his head, there was a, there was, um, a, there was a, a Beaufort bomber flying above him. And he, and he thought, oh, that's, that's interesting. There's a Beaufort bomber. It's, you know, it's rather interesting. And strangely enough, a few moments earlier, in the distance, he heard the Beaufort guns opening up um, on the airbase. And apparently, he later found out that the it was a it was um, a, a British bomber captured in France, and it flew over to Saint Athen, and the the airbase at Saint Athen thought it was one of theirs, and it opened fire on the people on the on the on the runway. And strangely enough, nobody was killed, and it and it shattered loads of um, glass. Um, and I just think that's a rather interesting story that um, a captured 
British bomber flies in flies towards St. Athens, opens up on the base and flies away. And I think it's probably because when they abandoned the plane, they left a they left a map of the airfield or something. And he, and he flew, he just flew in there and he just flew back again. I thought there's a you get rather interesting little stories like that when, when you talk to uh, old boys from the landscape. So, okay, now I, I love this site. Um, again, we're, we're back in the, um, the house itself. Um, and you don't ever get to see this because you always look up these, these metal things. Um, and I know for a fact that a few years ago, uh, oh, and by the way, everybody, um, the grant money that we've had, we've actually just spent and we've got um, some really good film equipment now. So um, we, I might be going down there with Rosamond and we might be filming inside there. And you guys will be some of the first to see those videos. So we'll do a little video around here, but it's, it's beautiful. It, it's metal lined at the base because it, 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 it these the you know, very you know, metal lined shutters at the base. Um, and there was a little, little bit of history is when you go there, um, these were actually linked. They, they, they were actually linked over. Um, and it's, it's a rather interesting place and it's been really well preserved. And it's likely at one stage, um, in the early stage, before they had the storage building, um, it was probably likely that that building was built first um, alongside this building. Those were the original furnaces at the back. So the earliest stage of this building, uh, the earliest stage, the 1888 stage of these. And then later on, you've got this built and then later on this built. So by the time they built this Gillian, they were thinking about closing it. Which is which is the typical thing that happens, um, and you can if you see whilst you walk there, um, it's not um, it's more actually the rail track itself is a little bit up here actually um, hidden in all this. It's rather interesting. Um, now let, let's um, let's let's try and give you a little bit of a ghost story. But before we do that. Where, it, when you actually go into this building, it's not, um, you don't actually get any um, weird sort of ghostly feelings. It's more on the marshy landscape, which is more hunted, haunted than anything. I've only ever given one walk down here. O only, only one walk. Um, and I tell you what, that was a very strange walk. And I've got to tell you a little bit about that. Um, we, we, had, we had about 10 people booked online and... Um, and it was like, well, that's good. And we had a few phone calls of other people. Anyway, when, when I was driving down to Aberthaw, this one person phoned up and said, oh, oh I heard the walk's canceled. Can I have my money back? And I said, no, it's not. And she said, oh, there's signs up on the car park. And there was a sign outside the pub saying that the walk was canceled. And I said, no, it's not. Anyway, it was, it, they didn't want somebody having a ghost walk down here. They, they, they tried to put people off. And we lost a few people that night um, doing the ghost walk. We never had another ghost walk down there. Um, very strange. Um, anyway, just just a little bit of um, just just a little bit of a ghost story. There's a story that I've told over and over again, um, and it's a story associated with this road. And what I need to do, um, I probably need to go through some of my slides, um, and I'm going to go a little bit forward. I, I, I've had this ghost story in my head for the past. Um, for the past um, 20 minutes actually. Um, and the starting point is um, around here. Um, and probably the ending point is around here where the, where the station is. Um, and what is interesting is my little ghost story that I'm sure Gillian and everybody else has heard and Dell, but I need to say it in the right context. It's the story which is in my book, The Romans of Eric Morgan, about the Roman ghost. Now, um, obviously, you know, whenever I heard this story, it was a few years ago. So about 50 years ago, um, it was said um, that it was said that you could see a Roman soldier um, walking um directly um in front of you across the road in a bit of a um a bit of an angle you would always see the ghost walking from 
uh, the eastern side of the road to the western side of the road. And this ghost kept being seen. And, and a, a few things, a few things people said was it looked like a ghost of a Roman soldier. And the other thing that people said was it was believed to be um, a soldier that you could only see the um, bottom bottom part of, of the body up. You know, that's what it said, the bottom part of the body up. Um, and, and then if people used to say that it was because the level of the road, road had raised over time. People kept seeing it, people kept seeing it over and over again. Anyway, 40 years ago, they decided to widen the road. And I know some of you have heard this story before. They decided to widen the, they decided to uh, widen the road um, around this point, okay? Um, on, the, uh, on, the, on the verge itself. And when they widened the road um, at that point, where the, where the uh, yellow uh, arrow is, they found the remains of a body and the remains of the body was without a head. And everyone thought, obviously, this body itself must be the body associated with the ghost. Um, and that's basically it. But then the body of the ghost kept being seen. And the body of the ghost kept being seen for another 10 years. And people going to the pub would always talk about the ghost. They would always say, don't go out in that late at night, wandering down Pont towards Pont de Gary, particularly after you've been intoxicated, particularly after you've drunk a lot. Because if you see, you'll definitely see this ghost. Like, anyway, then uh, 30 years ago, they were then digging on the opposite side of the road whilst they were widening it. And guess what they should find, um, Gillian? Another they body. Find... No, they found the head. Oh. Because the, the, um, the first part of the body, they found without the head. And they thought, right, who, who's, who's, got the, who's got the rest of the body? Um, a lo local clergyman said, right, what we'll do, we'll put the, I don't know, I don't know what happened with the body within those 10 years. But anyway, um, somebody said, oh, I've got, I got the bones of the body and we'll put the head and they, and they decided to bury it. Now, I think, I think it was actually buried. There you go. Um, you, you've got the chapel there. Um, and I think it was actually buried in East in Abathor itself in consecrated ground. I'm not sure. But then the ghost was never, ever seen again. And it's said because the ghost, the, the two parts of the body were unified, uh, that the body, the, the person, the ghost kept walking from the one side of the road to get to his head and and it was just trying to say you know follow me you know one day if you follow me you'll find you find one part of my body you'll find the other part of the body and when they were united nobody ever saw the ghost again so for 30 years the ghost has never ever been seen again i think that i think that's a lovely little story um and and it, it's it's very much it's very much to do with 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 the landscape the stories that we we actually talk about now um, what I want to do is I wanted to um, speed on a little bit more, but one building we're going to look at is that building there. Oh, hang on. There we go. Yeah, let's get the arrow in there. Um, it's known as Marsh House. There you go. And, and I, I, to, for John, if he's interested, um, there you go. This is, um, this is marked there as um, Abathor Well, and this is Well Road. Um, and the other thing as well is if anyone's interested in railways, which I know John is, so I, I'm, I'm going to really mention this. If he wants to look for um, railway architecture um, and a little bit of, and, and anyone interested in railways, if you go down Well Road, so you've got the, you've got the pub there, there's a little road going down there called Well Road. You go under a big arch, which is part of the modern rail, railway bridge. And if you sort of look over at the end, you can actually see the old bridge, which is associated with, there you go, the old railway. Um, and another, another little fact I want to tell you all is that the station there, there's the station. Um, it was a station of two levels because the low, lower railway uh, was set lower than the other railway above for the Vale Morgan Railway. So you have two platforms. 
you had to go over a big bridge to go down to the other railway. Um, it's a bit like when you go to Cardiff, you get the Heath's high level and the Heath's low level. It's a bit like that. Um, so there, there was basically two stations for the same location that was for two separate train lines. Um, mm. So, you know, it's, it's a queer little story. And there you can actually see Aberthaw Branch and the Taff Railway. Do, do, do. Actually, actually. Um, and then you've got the rail, Vale Railway there. So you've got all this very intriguing about the railway and there's more about that in the next newsletter. Do you want to say something, Gillian? No. What about, what about you, um, um, Amy? We haven't heard from you at all. We can't hear Amy. Never mind. Okay, let's carry on. Um, so well, I, I like this. Um, it, it, this used to be, Gillian, you must remember um, the old, hang on, the old bridge, and I will show you where that is now. It's, um, hang on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, now you know the one. Let, let's get it up there. The old bridge is, we've got an illustration of it. We've got the old bridge, which is there, um, before they put, before they actually, um, before the railway was built. Um, I think not before the, I think not really, but that area there is what we're going to look at now. So if we, if we look at this now, um, and it brings back the memories, because it brings back the memories to me, Julian. Mm -hmm. uh, not that. Oh, God, we, we've lost the an image. Where is it? Hang on a minute. There we go. Look at that. You remember that old bridge? You, do, do you remember it, Julian? Yes, I do. It, 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 I remember it myself, and I, obviously I remember the time that because um, what happened over here there was the new new road around here there. That's where the new road is going to be, um, and this is the old this is the old bridge, Burton's Bridge, yeah. and that that there is the Kenson River. If anyone does, doesn't know, no, the, yeah, the Kenson River, yeah, because there's. There's the Kenson River and there's the... Um, it was a very twisty road, wasn't it? Yeah, the very twisty road. You remember it. I remember it as well. And, and it's also good to fish there, John. So, John, if you ever get to fit, if you ever go to towards Lantwick Major and you get a road that then goes off to down this bit of the road and there's a little bit of a kink on the left over the old bridge, um, you can't really park along there now. But if you get there, John, a really good fishing really good fishing um i don't think it's a licensed area either it's a great, really nice that anyway um so back to where we got now i think the next thing i was going to do for those that are interested because I, I didn't really want to do this um you've got um, something known as the boys village which is um over uh, this neck of the woods I think that's that's about right. Um, and then, uh, because all this landscape here is completely altered, it's got you know the uh, the power station and um, lots of this landscape has completely changed. But the boys' village, which is that arrow there, um, in that neck of the woods, shows you um, just a quick thing. So we'll come, we'll do this when we do Jarlston. Um, all this is going to be demolished soon because we're going to build a housing estate there well actually i don't think they are building a housing estate there with the crash in the um housing market um i think they may have already started but i don't think anyone's going to ever live there i, I know somebody who's actually bought one of the houses gillian oh can i tell you what yeah oh my god i've got another ghost story coming in do you what do you know do you, will, can i apologize for telling you this ghost story at the wrong time because um, I, I was knocking on a, I was knocking on the door of um, I was knocking on um, because what they did there's lots of other buildings here um, and um, I was um, and I, I knocked on the door of a house in St Athen um, and some and somebody had bought I didn't know this somebody had bought my um, my Romans in Elig Morgan and like you Gillian a stalker. It, it phoned me up to buy another copy. Of, uh, and, um, I, 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 it was Romans in the Vale of Morgan and he wanted Ghosts of, Glamour, um, Ghosts of Glamorgan. Anyway, I ran around there and he, um, his missus answered the door. And she said, oh, you better come into the kitchen. And I'm thinking, my luck's in you, Gillian. 
Um, and then in the kitchen, there, there was a husband and he said, he said, I wanted to talk to you. I thought, oh my God, Gillian. Yeah, I, I, I really, I really come up on this one. And he said, I want to tell you this story. And him, him and his missus, right, um, was actually visiting um, one of the buildings here. Um, and they were going to, they, they, had, they were going to convert them or something. Um, and, um, and, he, and he, and he, because one of the little, um, sort of, I, I can't remember, I can't really describe it anyway, he was going to buy one of the buildings and, and there was a guy waiting at, at, at one of the doors and he thought it was the estate agent and he was there with his missus and he, and he said, um, he said, oh, um, are you the estate agent? And the individual didn't say anything. Um, and he wandered in the house and and basically the both of them followed this individual inside the house um and he closed the um and he closed the door behind them um and i think they had a conversation and the the, the gentleman said oh this is where the children uh, this is where there used to be a children's room um and then the then the um then the gentleman said oh why didn't you go upstairs um anyway they went upstairs and um they weren't followed by the person downstairs and they had a look around upstairs and they thought oh this is interesting and there was children's toys and everything still in the building right and it, it, it was still carpeted and all sorts of weird things anyway mm. they went downstairs and the gentleman said oh um are you going now and they said oh yeah we've got to go we've had a good look around anyway they went outside um, and they said goodbye to the gentleman, and the gentleman closed the door. And guess what happened then, Gillian? Another car turned up, and a gentleman gets out, and um, and the gentleman says, "Oh, um, have you come to view the house?" Um, and the two of them said, "Yes, but you've all, but somebody's already shown us into the building." And the person said, "No, they haven't." And they said, yeah, we've just been in there now. Didn't you see? And they realized there was no other car there, right? Anyway, so, so the person said, oh, they, they, they looked at each other and they said, oh, do you want to go and see inside the house? And they said, we've seen inside the house. It's lovely. And then the estate agent opened the door, right? And they went inside the house, right? And there was no toys downstairs. There was no carpet. There was wall, the, the wall pit was hanging off the walls. And he said, oh, you can't really go upstairs because it might not be safe. And I said, we've already been upstairs. <laughs> and the estate agent said, there's no way you could have gone inside the house. Couldn't you see that I just opened the lock with a chub, it, it had a, a, chub, a chub deadlock on the door? Right? And, and, and they, they said, well, hang on. We, and they, and they, and, and the estate agent said, do you want to look around further? And they said, no, we don't want to look around further. <laughs> Strangely, you can buy it. I wonder why. I, I, I wonder why, exactly. I wonder why. Anyway, that's a great story. There's a couple of other things. Um, um, he, he said that, um, I, I'm not going to tell you the other stuff, the stuff about the boys' village, because I want to do that, that, the other story again, but you know where we're going with that. Um, but, but apparently this is all going to be demolished, all of it. And even... Um, that is actually a war memorial in the middle. Um, I think that's the war memorial. Um, I think it is. And they're going to move the war memorial back into the estate when they've demolished it all. I don't know. I don't know. It seems a bit strange to me. It seems a bit strange. It seems is a that a little chapel? It is a little chapel. And do you, do you know what? Um, uh, I know somebody who actually worked here in it was all still up and running there was a there was a big hall and everything it was all still up and running in 1991 yeah not 1991 the year the the year Amy was born <laughs> you're getting on a bit Amy um so, so what I want to what I want to do, I'm very aware that um, that um, we, we've we've done the an hour, but but I can't let any of you go yet because um, we haven't done the story uh, associated with the little man down the lanes. We've got to do that, even if we don't do anything else. But we've got to do something else, folks, because I what, what I want us to do is I want us to uh, look at this building. You know, a little bit back I showed you. 
if we go back again, doo -doo 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 -doo, um, I showed you a little building that's no longer with us called Marsh House. Do do do. And that, that image that I've just shown you is actually an image of Marsh House. Um, and I need to tell you about Marsh House um, because of that, even though it's no longer with us, we do have an image of what it used to look like before all the marsh, before all the landscape changed. So if we go back again, do, do, do. oh, there it is, sorry. Um, so Marsh House itself is basically, um, if we look down, this is an old image. No, that, that's wrong. Abathor and the Lays, 1950. That's probably, um, that looks like to me, like it could be a planning Luftwaffe um, image, actually. Um, but um, there's my, oh God, I just saw it. Oh, there's Marsh House there. Um, so let's have a quick look at that other image and then we'll do the little man down the Lays. So, um, Marsh House, there it is. So that's looking inland. Um, so towards, those are the more modern cement works, okay? Um, rather than the other ones that we've looked at, the Abathor line work. So Marsh House, um, they say that this is in the West Village, but it's, it's actually more in the East Village, actually. <coughs> it's said that in um, 1636, illegal tobacco was kept here. Um, and it's, it's a rather um, interesting um, story um, because it's written down that in the 1730s, um, the master of soldiers um, from Cardiff was sent to arrest uh, the owner of this building because it said that there were stockpiles of illegal tobacco kept here. Um, and I think, I think the actual story is, is that the illegal tobacco um, was sent to um, th the Blue Anchor and it was kept there. And when the master of soldiers and his men got here, there was nothing in these buildings at all, except for agricultural produce and nobody was arrested. And apparently, apparently that's written down in the annals um, of, of Abathor. A few other things as well is is that um, the other things the other things that the, the landscape was really well known for um, was also trade in wine and salt, and I think the salt is obviously coming from panning um, on the English coast, um, and there's also lots um, mentioned about dried fruit from France being imported in here, so. No, those goods are being imported in here. And also the best leather from France is being imported in here as well. Um, and it's said possibly that the Civil War had an impact on trade here as well. So what I would like to do uh, is as I'm gonna take a little bit of a surf, we need to set the scene. We're going to do no more about Abathor other than my wonderful story in this wonderful book. Um, and the wonderful story in the wonderful book, you know what? That image itself explains everything, right? So what I need to do, well, as I'm reading this, okay, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, before I read this out, I need, I need you guys to be able to appreciate what I'm talking about a bit more. So before the 1950s, um, this is what the landscape looked like. And what I would like to do is now that's where the power station is. So we set the scene. Um, in the story, it mentions an oxbow lake. Set the scene. I also mentioned sand dunes. Now, to try and understand this, I, I think the... Um, the sand dunes are going to be over here and I and also it mentions the golf course which I'm also told is over here as well um, and I think the golf course spreads over here and there's also something known as the ocean pub um, that's set in the scene the ocean pub 
And then when we get to it, later on, the landscape changes and he changes the story a little bit and he's talking about the breakwater over here. Um, so what I'm going to do now, um, and I mentioned the sand dunes, so that's now set the scene. So here we go, folks. Um, the Little Man Down the Lays by Je Desmond Johnson. Um, so, and I'm, I'm going to, um, I can't really replicate his voice, but the whole story is actually on my YouTube channel. Del, if you type in Lantwit Major Ghosts, you'll see uh, Desmond Johnson, where I interview him live a couple of years ago. He's no longer with us, sadly. So this, here we go. This sighting takes us to a time before the summer, before the power station, Abathor, before the Second World War. The tide was coming in, and I was sat down there duck shooting, and I sat on the bank like I'm sitting now. So you can work out any of those banks along the river there, any of those banks, see the Twisty River, anywhere along there. Sat back upright as I'm on, on the chair, and the dog in front of me. And as there was a beautiful night, moonlit night, and Patch, that's the dog name, sitting alongside me, he started to growl, looking, he started to growl. He was looking over my shoulder, and he growled even more. And then Desmond looked around and there was this little fella standing there with a pink cap and a waistcoat done up and his trousers tied up like that. In brackets, trousers folded and tied on the knee. Now, the old fashioned way to stop the rats going up. I think I turned around and said, where did you come from? He just disappeared. Desmond said to me in the interview, he said, but he was as plain as looking at Lynn now. Lynn was with me in that interview that day and he just disappeared, just disappeared. Hence the name, the little man down the lays. However, and I have seen him after that since the power station has been there. So obviously after the 1950s. I was down there one night, same sort of night, moon, beautiful moonlit night, white cloud, mackerel cloud, and he was walking on the sea wall. So you see that bottom arrow there? That sea, that's the sea wall, the great water, the sea wall. I went up on the sea wall and walked after him and I couldn't gain on him. You know, it was the same distance all the time. As fast as I went, it didn't alter the distance. The first night that I saw him again was like it was when the river was forming an oxbow, a couple of acres of ground. So that's the oxbow. We, we, we've seen that there. Oxbow is when, when the uh, river sort of changes course and, and there's an area of water trapped. Um, and I was sat under the bank and I thought it was a friend of mine, Laurie Hopkins from St. Athen. And he walked, he went through the sheep and they didn't move. They were lying down, the sheep didn't move. So I thought, go and have a look because there were always ducks on the bend in the river. I got to the bend in the river and there were just no marks in the mud. No marks in the mud. I called Laurie and no answer. But there was no one there, no marks in the mud or anything. And this person who went that way didn't come back, he just disappeared. And Desmond Johnson said, well, I've seen him. That's three times. But that's not the end of the story. But I've known two other people that had seen him once when the sand dunes were there before the golf course there were sand dunes there there you go sand dunes there it is there's the sand dunes 
finger. And there was Tommy Luscombe. There was a pub there. Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on. Hang on. No, we're not talking about there. Sorry. Over there. The sand dunes over there here. Sorry. Got the wrong sand dunes. Um, right. So, so here we go. We start again. And there was Tommy Luscombe. There was a pub there. The Ocean Building or Ocean Pub or something like that. And he was with his wife to be in the sand dunes, lying in the sand dunes. And she said to him, Tommy, she said, there is, there is a little man watching over us. And he turned around and started to shout at him and he disappeared. And he dis described him to me as exactly the same. Waistcoat jacket, peak cap and his trousers. The waistcoat was brown, trousers brown, all it was matching. They were brown, he could see the buttons and everything as clear as day. And then there was a, another person, a shift foreman, a third person, Stan Lavery from Barry, on nights with me on the cement works. Now the cement works, those um, cement works, the big cement works, there you go. Roost cement works. He was down there one night, he said, fishing. And I said, go on then, carry on. And he said, he's a Barry person. Here by gum, I happened to look and there was a little man standing alongside me. Uh, and then Desmond said, uh, uh, what was he dressed like? And he's, and he had described him exactly the same way that I just said. I couldn't make it out. There is no answer to it, is it? Anyway, because he just disappeared. When I spoke to him, I'm talking to myself, but the dog could see him as well. See, but the sheep couldn't. The, the dog could see him, um, Desmond could see him, but the sheep couldn't see him. So, um, and basically, the, the, he says, the sheep didn't see him. You couldn't see any leg movement. There was no sort of stepping. He just guided along. And I went after him on the sea wall to see if I could catch up with him. But if he was real or not, when we got underneath the end of the wall, so over here now, when, when it got to sort of over here, um, uh, and uh, underneath the end of the wall, under under the caravan at front of the Gary, there was no one there, not a soul. And I thought that was a great story that spurred me on to write this book. And that one story itself, alongside the other stories, decided to get me writing this book. And um, if anyone can actually see me on the screen, that is an image of Desmond Johnson. So what we're going to say now. Um, We've got a little bit over, so we're going to um, stop the screen sharing. Um, and I'm going to ask, are there any questions? Um, and John says a couple of things. Um, the saying is the hounds are out, as in smooth hounds, part and parcel of the shark family live there since September to December. John, you're talking, you're talking fish. I don't get a bit of that. You can explain yourself. Anyway, what we're going to do, we're going to unmute, uh, well, actually, Amy or um, Gillian, anything you want to say before we open the mics? Can you go down Well Road or is it a private road? No, you can go down it. I think it's, I think it's not a council adopted road, but you can go down it. You, you've got um, just sort of, whenever you go down the road, there'll be always people looking down at you, right? Uh, just thinking, what the hell are they? But it's actually, it's actually, a, there is actually a public footpath at the bottom. Don't park down there, I say. Park a bit further up. There is a parking at the bottom, but I wouldn't park there. Uh, but anyway, go down there. You go under this wonderful railway arc built by the Taff Railway. Um, no, the Vale of Morgan Railway. And then you get, you go a bit at the end of the um, car park. Best to go there in the winter, Gillian, because you won't see the bridge. You look a little bit further over, there's a lovely bit of a bridge. It, it's a bit ruinous, but there's a nice bit of the bridge of the mm. Aberthaw Railway. And that, if, if you do get to see it, that'll connect you with the next um, article in the newsletter about the railway written by um, 
Richard Enos. Um, anything you want to say, Amy? Uh, yeah, um, when the, my connection broke earlier, um, I was going to say Fon Mon Castle um, is owned by an actor who was in Game of Thrones. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's been sold since now. Yeah, it's been sold. I think it was sold in 2017. Yeah, has been sold since. You're right. Yes. But the um, but I think that they, the the um, the Boothby family still have the rights to um, still have the rights to um, yeah the, the the quarry. And do, do you know do you know what? Right. If I if I um, hadn't slightly changed my direction with 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 my acting, um, mm -hmm. you know, I I could have ended up buying that myself. But anyway, uh -huh. you, Amy, yeah. Is the actor the, the present owner? Yes, he is. Um, I was meant yes. to be at an event there this coming weekend, but obviously it does not happen now. I was there last summer for a garden party, and um, there was somebody there who was really famous, but his name escapes me now. I can't remember his name, but he's probably the owner. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah they sold in 2017 by, by the Boothby family, so yeah. I think the Boothby family still own Font de Gary as well, but um, but then again, it's a it was a it's a big responsibility that house and the estate. So yeah, uh, right. Um, what we're going to do? We're going to unmute everybody else. Um, so Dell, uh, well, I, I can unmute John. I'm trying to unmute you. Oh yeah, go on, Dell, you first. No, fine. Learned a lot there of an area I'm not familiar with. There was there was a lot there was a bit more I could have put in there tonight, but obviously yeah, I mean I've yeah. driven back up and down that lane to Barry and back, you know, frequently. But um, it's uh, it's you know I didn't know a lot about the history and things that have gone on there. Um, and there's a lot there that I would like to explore at some time. Good, 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 good. Um, and John. Well, yeah. Um, it's an interesting area, and Very. both Margaret and I have been there, and that castle fascinated me, but at the time it was closed, and mm. you have to go at certain times to go around there, but yeah, you can, but mm, there's a lot of strong advertising for weddings, well, okay, that's fine, but on the gallery, yeah. yeah. It's an interesting area, and I wouldn't mind if I could have some of the road maps to find the Roman bits and pieces. I did try to record it, but I can't because you won't allow it. Uh, John, I, it's not that I won't allow it. It's because this this goes on YouTube, so you will get you will get a link from this, and I will. Actually, John, I will get the link out tonight so you can actually watch it uh, later on. So you've got all the maps and stuff. So it's fine, John. You get it anyway. And you'll be getting next, next last week's as well via email. So, yeah, that's fine. Amy, I remembered who I saw. Yeah. It was David Emmanuel. Oh, David Emmanuel. No, he doesn't own it. <laughs> no, no. I, he was there. Oh, wonderful. Cool. So, um, that's it. Is, so what, what what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do um, if nobody's got anything else to say, um, it's disappointing that everybody else didn't turn up tonight. It's a strange one. Um, anyway, next week we're gonna be looking at more of the Ogmore landscape next week, um, and that's the first one that John did. <laughs> so we're gonna be looking at more of the Ogmore landscape next week. So I, I think I'll I'm gonna I'm gonna I'll, I'm gonna go a bit further into Ogmore. Um, so this Ogmore part two next week. Um, and in the week, in, over the next few weeks, if anyone's got any other topics, um, ghost, ghost landscapes they'd like to look at, that, then these are the evenings to do it. Um, if there's no other questions, um, then if anyone's got anything else to say, say it now. No? Oh. Okay then. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Okay, um, I've, I've appreciated that tonight and um, I will obviously be calling everybody on Monday, probably won't get through to Gillian as usual. Uh, <laughs> and um, and yes, I, I will. I, what's that, Gillian? I'll be down in Abathor. Uh, well, that's a good reason to be down in Abathor. You could you can travel five miles distance from your family uh, from your family mm -hmm. home. Uh, but I can't, uh, Gillian. I don't think you're going to get any parking. To be honest with you. Any what? 
you're not going to be able to park anywhere, I don't think. I, th I think I think the I think those people at the bottom down Well Lane will probably stop anyone parking at the bottom. They can't stop you walking down there. But I, you, know, you can park at Betty's fishing ponds. Betty's fishing pond. Betty's fishing pond. Ah, Betty's. Betty's fishing pond. Yeah. Betty, right, as in a woman. No, yeah. no, no. It is, as in Welsh, I, I don't speak Welsh, I don't Betos. understand it, I have nothing to do with it. Ah, I thought you were about Betty's pond, they're about as well. Anyway, oh, bizarre. No, I don't <laughs> think you've got it right at that either, but yeah, uh, Betty's ponds, we have a vast parking space. Ooh, get to know John. You get a you get a parking space, but is yeah. How near is that to Aberthaw then? Miles away. <laughs> I, I'd get arrested if I went to Aberthaw. But Carl, bear with me. That castle there fascinated me, and I dare say that could be the subject of another archaeological subject which I've never I've never done fun mon yeah that's a that's a challenge that will be done right good that's sorted uh that's good so what I'm, what I'm gonna do I'm gonna I'm gonna um call it a night now so anyone wants to chat afterwards may do so thank you very much have you all enjoyed tonight folks yes Jambo Boana Moriaco looking forward to next week's so am I. I, I that'll be good. That'll be good. Thank you. Yeah, Bye. Thank good you, night, Dal. Bye. 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 Mombasa, Mombwana, Mombwana, Mombwasa, Buana, Moriaco, Jumbo, Buana. On that note, John, we're going. So I will see you. I will see you. Um, I will see you soon, John. But Jumbo, Buana, Jumbo. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. Okay. So right. He's he's gone. He's left us. <laughs>